Now, welcome on today's uh, science lesson. That is the standard eight, still covering animals. And the last time we discussed, we were introducing animals, and we discussed the types of animals, that is domestic and wild animals. We discussed different characteristics of animals. We discussed classification when we consider the products that are from the animals. Where we discussed uh, camels, uh, cattle, different type of the products that we get from cattle, the product that we get from cows, and the product that we get from sheep and other animals. Now, it's good to understand the classification when we consider the products and also we have that general characteristics or classification when of all animals. That one, it was classification when we consider the products, specifically the products. If animal produces egg, we, we classified as either poultry, then when animal produces meat, mohair, we said it is goat. We said when animal produces wool, meat, that is a sheep. Now today we are going to cover classification, but now considering the fact that now uh, all animals, not considering their products, but generally all animals. Now when we, uh, we classify animals, we said classification, this is the grouping of animals according to their either similarity or differences but here we are going to classify them considering the similarities now animals generally are classified as either vertebrate or invertebrate we either classify them as vertebrate or invertebrate that is number one we have the general animal here then they we have the two groups that is either vertebrate or invertebrate now when we talk about vertebrate what are vertebrates when we talk of vertebrates these are animals that have backbone when you attach at the behind of your back, you will find that you have a bone here. That's what we call a backbone. Now, animals with backbone are said to be vertebrates. But those animals that lack that backbone are said to be invertebrate. So, in means they lack, lack of. So, in means lack of. So, we have vertebrates and invertebrates. Now, after classifying them as vertebrates and invertebrates, we have now those types of animals that are vertebrates. Now, we consider vertebrates as either they can be warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Now, if somebody asks you, what is warm-blooded animals? Now, warm-blooded animals, these are animals that have constant body temperature. But while those cold-blooded animals, these are animals with varying body temperature. What are examples of warm-blooded animals? Warm-blooded animals, we have either they can be mammals or they can be birds. We can either be a mammals or birds. Then what are the examples of uh, cold-blooded? We have reptile, we have fish, and we have also amphibians. Example of mammals, human beings are examples of mammals. And when you say mammals, these are animals that have mammary glands. They, have, they produce milk. Then we have birds. We will talk about the characteristics of mammals, characteristics of birds, reptiles, fish, and amphibians. Now, when you come to invertebrates, invertebrates, we group them either. They can be insects. They can be arachnids. They can be worms. They can be mollusks, also they can be grubs or the myriopods. What are the examples of insects such as we have butterfly, arachnids, we have ticks, spider and also mites. Then examples of worms, we have earthworm, also we have examples of mollusks, we have snail, slug, examples of grubs, grubs we, you know we have just a grub then we have myriopods examples of myriopods that are the millipeds and centipedes so you must understand all the classification from animals vertebrates in vertebrates warm-blooded cold-blooded and the examples then we also have to understand insects arachnids worms mollusks grubs and myriopods now directly we are going to discuss now the characteristics of each of the uh classification the group now we will start by mammals I've already discussed it. Number one, you say they have mammals, mammary gland. When you talk of mammary gland, I said this is mean they produce milk. They produce milk. Now, if animals are milk producers, we say we classify them as uh, mammals. Also, when we look at the body covering, all mammals, they have their bodies covered with either fur, uh, fur that is fur or hair. So they can either be have a covering with the fur or 
hair. Number three, we said most of them they give birth to young ones. For example, uh, human beings they give birth to young ones, a baby. Then we have a cow which give birth to young ones. Then also we have those. We say most of them they give birth to young ones. But we have those mammals that they have mammary glands but they don't give birth to young ones. But what they do, they lay eggs. What is the examples of uh, mammals that lay eggs? They include number one, we have the darker built platypus and lastly we have what we call the spiny ant eater. We have the darker built platypus and uh, the uh, spiny ant eater. Those are the examples of uh, a, a mammals that uh, lay eggs. Now we move directly to order number four. That is the characteristics number four. Characteristics number four we say they are warm blooded. When you say animals are warm blooded, we say they have body constant body temperature. What's the meaning of constant body temperature? When you say it has a constant body temperature, that means when it moves from one zone to another zone, the temperature will remain the same. If you measure your temperature at Garissa, you move it to a cold area, for example, Nairobi, and you still measure your temperature it will be constant it will not change because of the variation or either when you change from a uh, hot season then you move to uh, water you will have a constant temperature that is the meaning of the word warm blooded now others we mo another characteristic you say they breathe by lungs or they use lungs as a, a breathing organism so they have breathe through lungs that is, is a common thing we discussed lungs and the parts of the lungs and also you understand how it the lungs works then we move to characteristics number seven where now we say most of them they live on land and others we have those that live in water for example we have well we have seal we have hippos now the name given to these animals that live in water but they are mammals they are said to be sea mammals they are said to be sea mammals now if somebody asks you to give examples of sea mammals you say number one is a whale number two is a seal and number four we talk about hippos or hippopotamus then we move to characteristics number seven the characteristics number seven of mammals we say most walk by use of limbs we have those mammals that walk by limbs but also we have one mammal that fly and an example of mammal that fly we, oh, it, it's only one that is a bat we have a bat that uh, is an example of mammal that fly now if an examiner asks you to give an example of mammal that uh, fly that is a bat but generally all other mammals they walk by use of their limbs and limbs is just legs for example human being cows cattle all of them they walk by use of their limbs now we move to characteristics number eight which is the last characteristics we talk about feeding now feeding animals mammals either they feed on flesh or they feed on vegetables or they feed on both now we discussed an uh, example of uh, the name given to animal that feed on flesh being a carnivorous we said those that feed on vegetables be being herbivorous and we said those that feed on both flesh and vegetable being uh, uh, what we call the omnivorous now we have omnivorous herbivorous and carnivore the carnivores feed on flesh the omnivorous feed on both flesh and meat then we have have the habivo which feed on vegetables we move to another uh, animal that is birds still on warm blooded now birds characteristics number one they are covered with uh, their body are covered with feathers we said the animals that is mammals they are covered with hair or fur but here birds are covered with uh, feathers now example of birds we have chicken we have uh, geese those are examples of uh, birds now number two we talk of they, they have beaks instead of uh, teeth when you look at the birds it has a beak a beak is that part that is used for eating and also uh, breaking down some food substances and either also for protection now we have number three we say they lay eggs this eggs it is fertilized internally that is it means it have internal fertilization that is a uh, number number three characteristics number three of birds characteristics number four we say all birds they are warm-blooded I have already discussed warm-blooded number five 
We said they breathe through lungs. Breathing through lungs, you understand, that they use lungs as the breathing system. Then, that is for ex gaseous exchange, oxygen coming in and carbon dioxide going out. That is breathing through lungs. Number six characteristics, number six, we say they have claws on their feet. Now, when you look at all birds, they have claws. This is maybe a feet of a certain, maybe for chicken, when you look at the end of every toe, you get that now it has what we call a claw. These claws are used for protection and also for movement and also for searching for food. When you look at chicken, they look for food for, by use of those claws. Now, when you look at stem, still on the feet, we may get that they are covered with scale. The feet of the uh, birds, they are covered with scale. Characteristics number seven. All uh, birds, they have wings. That means they fly. When we talk of wings, wings are used for flying. So we say most birds fly, but we have those birds that do not fly. They are known to be now the flightless uh, birds. The fl example of flightless birds, we have what we call the ostrich, we have the pigeon, the eagle, the hawk, and the kingfishers. The hawk flies, the hawk flies, the eagle fly, and the kingfishers fly. But example of those that do not fly, we have an example that is an ostrich. Now. If somebody asks you to give example of birds, we have pigeon, eagle, hawk, we have kingfisher, we have chicken, and so many other examples of birds. Now, we move to another part of today, that is another animal, now under uh, cold-blooded. Now, under cold-blooded, we are going to discuss reptiles. Now, reptile, it have some characteristics which may most be different from birds and uh, from also uh, mammals. Now, the characteristics, number one, we say, all reptiles, they are cold-blooded. We said warm-blooded, they have constant body temperature. When you talk of cold-blooded, they are now, they have now varying body temperature. When they move from water to land, the body temperature changes. Now, when they move from land to either water again, the body temperature changes. That means they are cold-blooded. Number three, we say this reptile, they lay eggs. Now, these eggs that they lay, they are fertilized internally. Just the same as we, did, we discussed about birds, we say they have internal fertilization. Also, reptiles, they have what we call internal fertilization. Now, number three, we say the body are covered with scales. Their bodies are covered with scales, that the general body is covered with scales. Characteristics number four, they breathe through lungs. Examples of these reptiles are lizards, we have snakes, chameleons and the algados. So those are the examples of reptiles and these are the four main characteristics of this reptile. Cold blooded, lay eggs, body covered with scales and lastly breathing through lungs. Now we move to fish. Fish is also another uh, characteristic, is also under uh, vertebrates. Fish is also under vertebrates, so he said reptile, fish, amphibians. Now fish, what are the characteristics of fish? Number one, we say they are cold blooded. Number two, we say they breathe through gills. Number three, we talk most of them, they lay unfertilized eggs. Their bodies are covered with scales. Number five, we say they have fins. Now, if this cold blooded, we say it is varying body temperature, gills. Now, gills is different from lungs. When you move forward, you'll discuss the parts of gills, where we have the gill rakers, the gill filament, and also the gill bar. Now, these gills help in uh, gaseous exchange in fishes. Now, so you must understand it when you move forward in second level, you'll discuss the uh, adaptation of these gills to their function. Now, most lay eggs. The eggs of fishes, all of them, they are unfertilized eggs. Different from a reptile, you say they are in, in, in fertilized, that is internally, but this one they are fertilized externally. Now, we have another characteristics of this uh, fish. We have they are covered with scales, that is common. When you take any fish, you will find out that it, uh, their body is covered with scale. Now, number five, we say they have fins. Now, when you move forward, you'll talk about the uh, different type of fins, where you have the tail fin, you have the tail fin, we have the dorsal fin. Now, all these types of fins, they have different functions. So when you move forward, you'll move and discuss the function of these tails as you move forward. Now, 
What is the main function, the general function of fins? The general function of fin is just to cut out movement, either to move from one corner to another corner. We have those fins that are either used to, either to prevent the uh, overlapping of the, uh, the fish when it is moving and also to overlap turning of the fish in water. Example of these uh, uh, animals, that is fish, we have what we call the tilapia fish, we have the nile patch, we have the muddy fish and also we have the shark as examples of fish. Now lastly, we are going to discuss about amphibians and their characteristics. Now when you look there, we said amphibians are under cold-blooded. So the first characteristics we say they are cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded, we say they have varying body temperature. You must understand that. Number two, we say they have scales. Their bodies, when you touch their bodies, you get their rough. That means they have what we call scales. Number three, we say they have moist skin. They have scales, yes, but now these scales, they are moist. That means when you touch it, there is a lot of moisture on those scales. Now number three, we say they have moist skin. Number four, we say they lay eggs. Just the same as fish, these ones, the eggs are fertilized externally. These eggs, when they are laid, they are fertilized externally. But what are the environment that is very important in fertilization of amphibians? The environment is water, that is shallow waters. When you get where there is a shallow water, you may get that we have a lot of rocks at that area. Why? Because of that area is a good environment for fertilization of those eggs and also for reproduction of the amphibians. Now, number three, number five, the adult amphibians, they breathe through lungs. Wily, when they are still young, they breathe through gills. I have already discussed about gills. Now the young amphibians breathe through uh, gills, while the adult amphibians breathe through lungs. Now, we move to the last uh, characteristics of amphibian. Now we have, they live partly in water and also partly on land. When do they live in water? We say partly they live in water because at their young stages. Because when they have uh, hatched into young ones, they have to live in water because they carry out uh, gaseous exchange by use of gills. And gills cannot work out of the water, they normally work inside the water. So that's why you have water moving inside the buckles. When the water moves into the buckle cavity, it moves in with the oxygen. Now when it gets out, the oxygen that was in that water it is taken by this either the amphibians or fish then carbon 4 oxide is moved outside by still the same water that gets out now now what are the examples of these amphibians example of amphibian number one we have frog we have toad we have newt and lastly we have salamander now this is all about today's uh, discussion and now on today's discussion and summary we have discussed the general characteristics or general classification of animals and also we have discussed the general classification of animals that are vertebrates, general classification of animals that are invertebrates. This characteristic that we have been given of different animals is under vertebrates. During our next lesson, we are going to cover the characteristics of those animals that are now found under invertebrates. So you must understand these characteristics of vertebrates so that when we, move, when we meet next time, we can also have a good discussion considering the characteristics of those animals that are invertebrates. Remember, vertebrates have backbones, while invertebrates they lack backbones. That's all about today's lesson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's meet next lesson, inshallah.